Do you have the covering of Papa or Jesus? I think most of us can relate with this narrative. I was told I am under the covering anointing of this Papa, and that if I ever leave his ministry, I will be attacked. That is the reason people believe in the spiritual father doctrine, because they believe their spiritual father is covering them. Some Papas read the following scripture to tell their followers that they need them and their covering. 2 Kings 2, 9. Elijah took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you, but if not, it shall not be so. What a beautiful scripture! Elisha loved the spirit of Elijah so much that he asked a double portion of it. Elijah tells him, You have asked a hard thing. The next verse is very important, If you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. In other words, the only way Elisha could have a double portion spirit of Elijah, is when Elijah is taken away. I know people that propel a completely false and fundamentally flawed gospel of the covering, of the big bishop, uses this scripture. Let's get this straight right now. There was never a time, when Elisha was under the anointing of Elijah. Not once. Elijah never requested the anointing of Elijah, he requested the spirit that was in Elijah. He, he. There is not, anointing covering, nonsense in this verse. Elijah said, if you don't see me go, then it will not happen. You can only have a double portion of my spirit, if you see me go. So this is where their argument falls flat backwards and forwards. Even the Holy Spirit which is the Spirit of Jesus Christ only came after Jesus left this world, ascended into heaven. John 4:26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John 4:28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. John 16, 7. Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. If your bishop, prophet, pastor, papa says you are under his anointing and covering, ask him, Papa, senior spiritual father, how am I covered by your anointing when you are still alive? And, if you were dead, I don't want to be covered by the anointing of a dead man, I don't worship ancestors. Let me tell you now. At the very heart of this, anointing covering, stories is the subtle spirit of human worship. What you are not being told about these false doctrine of coverings, is that the reason why Elisha asked for the double spirit of Elijah, it was foretelling of that the coming of the Lord Jesus will be preceded by the ministry of Elijah. When you read Malachi 4, 5-6, the Bible says Behold I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. In the book of Matthew 11:14. Jesus Christ says John the Baptist was that Elijah which was for to come. So, John the Baptist also had the same spirit which was in Elijah. You see David knew this thing very well. When David told Saul the king of Israel that he will go and fight Goliath, Saul looked at this boy. And this is what he did. 1 Samuel 17 38-39, Then Saul clothed David with his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with armor. David girded his sword over his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. So David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. And David took them off. Saul took his own clothes, in other words he took his covering, and covered David. He said my boy, you can't face the devil without my covering. Goliath will destroy you without my anointing. You were only born again two years ago, you are still a small boy in the things of God, the devil is too much for you. There are witches and altars built against your name. Only my covering can defeat them. He he he. The devil is such a smooth liar. 
He was trying to plant some fear in the heart of David, that the devil is so bad, I need an armor from the chief senior apostolic sharpshooter bishop prophetic papa. They told me without his anointing, witches will come to my house. They told me without his anointing I will not get survive in business or employment. They told me without the anointing of this man, I am just as good as dead. Well let me tell you. They lied to you. You see David tried to walk in the anointing of Saul, oh boy was it heavy. He just couldn't do it, he tried to maneuver, but here was the anointing and the covering of another man so heavy on him. Then David said, enough with another man's anointing. Enough with being told that the day I leave this man, I will be a target of the kingdom of darkness. Enough with lies that only propels fear. Enough. So David, said sir, I cannot go with these. I have not tested them. Sir I cannot go with your anointing, it is too heavy. Your anointing chief senior major prophetic bishop comes with so many rules, and do's and don'ts. Your anointing is heavy on me, I cannot walk without fear, I cannot pray without fear, I cannot live without fear. I am always scared of questioning anything because I am scared that the anointing will not cover me. Besides I have not tested your anointing. I don't know where you get your powers from, I don't know what you do when people are sleeping, I am not sure if you are using mermaid powers to do miracles, I don't know if you are using powers to prophecy accurately from a god in Ghana called Kofi Kofi. Sir, I can't trust your anointing. I cannot go with your anointing. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 verse 7 verse 9 and 12 the following, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it. Let me tell you something, the Pharisees used to scare people. They used to tell people that the Shekinah glory of God was in the temple. People really believed that behind the inner veil that covered the Holy of Holies, there was really the Shekinah glory of God in the presence of the cherubs. Now remember, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8 to chapter 11, that is when the glory of the Lord departed from the temple. So the Pharisees knew that behind the inner veil there is nothing. But they couldn't tell people that. They had to pretend that there was something very seriously holy living with them in the temple. Lying religious spirits. Always inducing fear on people. So people were always scared of the physical temple. But what people did not know is that the glory of God was not behind that veil made of badger skins. The glory of God was in a man from Galilee called Jesus. Jesus Christ was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But the people did not realize it because these religious spirits that wanted honor, these religious spirits that loved it when men bowed before them, these religious spirits that told people that they are only saved because of the anointing of the Big Papa. But you see God had a plan in mind. The day that Jesus was crucified, the veil covering the most holy place was rent. God rent the veil and said, Everyone look inside here, there is no Shekinah glory of God in this place, there is no cherubims in this place, they lied to you. They told you that you are nothing. You cannot speak to God directly, you need some Papa prophetic apostle bishop, they lied to you. I am now breaking this veil. You don't need to be covered by anyone's anointing, right now you all have access to the Father. You have access to life. You have access to the pure anointing, straight from heaven above. On the day of Pentecost we understand there was 120 in the upper room. Suddenly there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all received fresh anointing from heaven above. The same day, 3,000 were added into the kingdom of God. Fresh anointing from heaven above. Peter said to them in Acts 2 38-39, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise belongs to you and to your children and to all who are far off, to all whom the Lord our God will call to himself. As long as the Lord is still calling, 
You have been given the promise of the fresh Holy Spirit, fresh anointing. Why are you at pawn shops looking for second-hand anointings? Heaven is still open for business. Come receive. Without money without price. Come receive the genuine anointing from the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Jesus will not turn you down. Take away that covering of a man, take away the second-hand anointing that you don't even know where it originated from. You are been invited today to come and receive the fresh manna from heaven. You are invited to come and receive the new wine. So throw away old traditions of men. As our Jesus told religious people in Mark 7:13, Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like this. Fear no more. Break the religious chains and the shackles around necks. You are free from the fear of religious men. Christ has set you free. Remove the second-hand garments put on you by religious spirits, put on the new garments of pure white. Made pure white by the blood of Jesus. You are free. Don't let anyone try to keep you in bondage again by vain deceit because who the Son has set free is free indeed. 1 John 2 27 But the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. May Jesus Christ bless you and may those who are seeking him find him now. Amen and Amen.